the Fantasy Fanatics podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Okay, welcome back to Fantasy Fanatics on Fantasy Fan- on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stepridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. What a great song. I'm, I'm kidding. It's, it's not a good song. Um, so, yeah, we were looking at uh, just some, some things in our league. We were going to transition into just uh, NBA talk. As we were talking about, Stephen Curry is taking the reins as the NBA's best point guard. A lot of talk over the last uh, week or so. Uh, pretty much uh, a lot of people are saying Curry is the best point guard in the league. Agreed. Um, and as you were saying, Ryan Risky, he almost plays like a shooting guard, which he does sort of play like a shooting guard. Um, but uh, he definitely you know, is in consideration for the – I mean, he's, he's definitely top three best point guard in the league. I mean, the thing is, he still averages like eight assists a game. Yeah, he uh, he does, and uh, I mean, obviously, the, there's other players in this discussion, like Chris Paul. But I mean, Chris Paul's more of a veteran. You know, Tony Parker, a veteran. Um, Russell Westbrook, who I, I don't think should be in that uh, d- discussion. I'm not a big fan of Russell Westbrook, but um, you know, Kyle Lowry and John Wall are all in there. So you know, it, it, it's definitely interesting. But I do think right now, Curry, and for the, the last few seasons, I think Stephen Curry's been the best point guard. You know that player that Freeman added to Ashish's team isn't even on Ashish's team right now. <laughs> That's interesting, too. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, I think Stefan Curry is the best point guard in the league. Yeah, he has to be. I I mean, okay, so I, so if you're going to do a top five best point guards out of, um, well, let's see, well, the, the players that, that, that they list here on this, uh, the, on this uh, thing I'm looking at on, online, you have uh, Stefan Curry... Tony Parker, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, Kyle Lowry, John Wall, Kyrie Irving, Derek um, Rose, Rajon Rondo, Darren Williams, and Derek Rose. So those are ten point guards. Um, Playing the point guard position, it's probably Rondo because so, he's he plays like how the the prototypical point guard would play. Right now, however, I'll, I'll, although he uh, Curry's the uh, best player out of those guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess if we were going by best. Why is Russell Westbrook on that list? Well. But that's like a top ten, which is true. You know, I I can't really think of anybody else who could replace Russell Westbrook necessarily uh, on that list. I mean, Kirk Heinrich, <laughs> Kirk, <laughs> Mario Chalmers. Like, like I don't think you know. There's not people that could really p- replace him. Um, so, for instance, if I was doing a top ten of this list, I, I I think right now Curry is the best player out of these players. Probably, I, I would go Curry. I, I would either go uh, Chris Paul or Kyrie Irving next. Um, I, I'd probably put Kyrie Irving next. Uh, then Chris Paul, J- John Wall could fit at, at number four for me. Um, you know, after that, uh, Derek Rose, I I think would be probably number five there when he's healthy. I mean, he's he's got all the tools and he's a reigning MVP. Although that that was almost four seasons ago. Um, yeah, after, that feels like an eternity ago now. It really does. I mean, Darren Williams is really not too good now. Kyle Lowry's pretty good. He's probably number six for me. Uh, Russell Westbrook would probably be number seven. No, I actually, I'd put Tony Parker ahead of him still. Um, and then uh, R- Russell Westbrook at number eight. And then you have Rondo and Williams next. I put Rondo and then Williams is probably the, the least effective. Yeah, real. Well, the thing is, if you're going by prototypical point guard, I think it's Rondo because of the assists that he makes. He doesn't really score. He relies on his other guys. Grant, he doesn't really have many other guys to score. Right. And by the way, did you see that stat line Rondo had the other day? It was like the oddest stat line I had ever seen for a point guard. I, you know, I think my... Uh, Somebody showed that to me. Uh, Two points, days. 12, yeah. <laughs> 12 rebounds, and 19 assists. It's crazy. It, did the Celtics win that game, or did they end up losing that game? I think they lost. I'm not sure, though. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming they lost just because they haven't really had that good of a year. But, uh, yeah, that's um, that, that's interesting. Um, and then, uh, so that uh, is the best point guard right now. And... Um, here is the best uh, players of last week, it, it looks like. This is kind of an interesting thing. Um, so this, uh, Marcus Saul has had a very good, uh, he was the Western Conference Player of the Month. Um, Stephen Curry, Anthony Davis has played really well this year. Kyle Lowry's been playing well. He's keeping Toronto in it uh, for sure. James Harden has played very well, although... Uh, his shooting percentage is awful. His shooting percentage is bad. He's doing a lot more things this year. I'm actually kind of uh, I'm impressed. He's not... Yeah, he's know, rebounding and assisting, except he still plays zero defense. And I, You'll be surprised. I was actually watching a college basketball game the other day. <gasps> 
Yeah. <laughs> and it was the Duke game because I like Duke. And oh, the Duke Wisconsin game. Yes. Oh, damn. I, see, I, see, I'm a, I'm, I'm not a big Wisconsin fan, but they are my favorite Big Ten team along with Northwestern. Yeah, Duke's my college basketball team. Well, and that's a shame. They said that's not a shame. Uh, anyways, they were saying that. Uh, they, I, I think his last one started with a W. They had a player that they said is that when he reaches the NBA could be a James Harden that plays defense. Yeah, uh, well, on Duke, some of the the good players they have, they have Okafor, uh, Leo Okafor from Chicago. Uh, I mean, obviously, Duke every year has f- at least four players who are NBA bound, so uh, it's going to be interesting. They're starting like three freshmen this year. They always start freshmen. Them, Kentucky, no, three Kansas. of them. Yeah, uh, well, Kentucky uh, it was either last year or two years ago had a starting five of freshmen. All, all, all starting five were freshmen. I remember when Marcus Teague was starting for Kentucky at eighteen years old. He wasn't even very good. He had no business entering the NBA draft. He had no business being selected. And then the Bulls stupidly took him. Yep, that's what they like to do, of course. Um, so let's see. Uh, LeBron James has been playing well. Klay Thompson has been playing very well. Blake Griffin. La- LaMarcus Aldridge, who I love, he's been playing pretty well. He's been playing like out of this world. He's shooting like 50%. Per- he's shooting threes this year. He is shooting more threes this year. Uh, I think he's only shooting like three a game. Here, I'm going to read the the little paragraph about him. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge continues to show his true all-around value by piling up double-doubles seemingly every night out. He notched his seventh straight uh, double-double in the Trailblazers' Thursday night home win over the Pacers. And the 19 points and 13 rebounds overshadows a rough shooting night, 7 for 21, that would deflate the spirits of an average player. Aldridge has been as productive as ever recently, averaging 22.2 points and 12.6 rebounds over the Blazers' last five games. Wow. Remember when he was only like a 6-8 to eight rebound guy a game? I, I do remember that. And then they traded for Robin Lopez to take some pressure off of him. Yeah, that seemed to help him a whole lot. Well, yeah, he took the whole additions level. of their team a couple of years ago when they got uh, Robin Lopez and when um, you know Wesley Matthews became a better player and when da- and then when they got Damian Lillard, like everything sort of started to change for them. And now they're you know like a powerhouse in the West. Damian Lillard was an underrated draft pick because in that draft, that draft supposedly had no point guards in, it, and they took him like fifth or sixth overall. Right, and uh, number ten on this list here of the best players of late, Jimmy Butler makes the list, so that's good. Um, obviously, he's playing very well. Um, especially defensively and especially offensively, actually. He's uh, shooting 28% for threes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, you know, something too. But he's definitely been playing really well. Um, now, is that because he wants his money? Or... Is because he's not that good. <laughs> he's playing for money. Once he gets his money, he's going to go back to playing like last year. That's uh, something that we'll talk about a little later on. And he still on. plays 45 minutes a game, so he's going to wear down by the end of the season. I, I agree. We're going to do a quick update, and then we'll come back and tease our next segment, which is the uh, hometown breakdown. FantasyFanaticSportsTownChicago.com. Welcome back to Fantasy Fanatics on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stepridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. And yeah, we have a little bit of time to uh, tease our little hometown breakdown segment here. We're going to talk um, a lot about baseball uh, for most of this hometown breakdown, especially with the Cubs and White Sox and what they might do. And, um, of course, you know, John, John Lester's been the talk of the town. Yeah, he has been, and the rumor is he's picking his team today or tomorrow. That's that's also what I saw. I'm actually going to go and look up right now, see if there's any news. And did you know on John Lester's Twitter profile, it says that where it says his location it has dot, it says like three dots, three question marks, and then three dots. <laughs> I like oh, that. The I Yankees like that. signed Andrew Miller to a four-year, thirty-six million dollar contract. All right. Now, in your opinion, does that mean they're probably out on Lester? Yeah, but they were never really in on Lester, Shields, or Scherzer. I mean, they, they wanted to up their bullpen, get a good lefty. They got that. I mean, $9 million a year is a lot for a setup, man. Yes, Although yes, they, that probably signals the end of David Robertson for them. Yeah, the, that's a good point because he's been a pretty good setup man for them for a while. I don't know why he's worth all this money. He, his ERA was over 8. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I know that, but, um, you know, I wonder if a team's going to go after Robertson. Yeah, that. Well, I well he, the thing is he costs you have to give up a first round draft pick to get him unless you have a top ten uh, pick then it's uh, then it's uh, your second round pick except do you want to do that for a reliever that had an ERA over three last year it, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't Especially think so. When the, and the Cubs can't go after him because they've already got good, young, cheap guys, and you don't want to pay 13 or $15 million for that guy. Look at the Jonathan Papelbon experiment for Philadelphia when they signed him as a 29-year-old. Right. Yeah, that did not uh, work out too well. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the White Sox and how they have uh, improved on areas that everyone thought that they should improve on, and they have. Um, they're obviously going to need more bullpen help. But, they need uh, a lot more bullpen and, help. And, they're, and if, if they truly want to be competitive with the uh, Royals, Tigers, and Indians, they need to get a starting pitcher. Yeah, they, they need a right hand. That's why they're in on Jeff Samarja. They've expressed interest in Max Scherzer. And just to go quickly... I don't think they have yeah, enough money no, for Scherzer. Well, actually, they do. They have plenty... Do, except they wouldn't have very much for the rest of the guys. Right. However, just a quick Bears update. Mark Tressman said Jay Cutler is the starting quarterback unless he's injured, so he's going to start the rest of the season. Well, as he should. I mean, there's no reason why he shouldn't be starting. And uh, Brandon Marshall is officially out for the season. Okay. Well, that's uh, what we expected. I, I just hope yeah. he gets better. And obviously we hope for everybody can have a bounce a bounce back year. Whether Mark Trestman is back or not, whether Mel Tucker's back or not, and oh, whether Oh dear uh, Lord, if if Mel Tucker is back, I know Ugh. that I don't see happening. That well, no, well, no. If, well, if there's one guy who's leaving, it's Mel Tucker. It has to be. Actually, well, I actually made a tweet out last week that said the Bears' the front office is going to use is going to look at that 14 yard run or that 14 yard rush on that run by Demarco Murray, and that's going to be what they base their decision on to keep Mel Tucker or not. <laughs> And because of that, because of that play right there, they're going to keep him. I, I I don't know. I, I I don't know what to think about the Bears, but um, I, I'm glad Marshall's okay and he's going to be you know fine. He'll be ready for next season. He'll be ready for next year. Hopefully, uh, Alshon Jeffrey can follow his lead and do good too. And uh, Martellus Bennett can continue his good success because the Bears haven't had a good tight end like that since Greg Olson. It's been a while. And, then and they didn't that, even use him because Mike Martz didn't like him. Yeah, that's true, and I mean, Mike Martz pretty much demanded that trade to Carolina for him. And the funny thing is, yeah, Mike Martz didn't like Greg Olson because he could catch. Yep. You don't want any catching tight ends, that's just... Uh, when you don't even have wide receivers that's taboo. that can yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's not good. But we'll talk more about the hometown breakdown coming up next in our final segment on Fantasy Fanatics, SportstownChicago.com. Hometown Breakdown. Chicago Cubs, Sox, Bears, and Bulls. Welcome back to our final segment here on Fantasy Fanatics on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stuffridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. All right, is the hometown breakdown. We are going to set aside this time to talk mainly about the Cubs and some of the offseason moves they're doing as well as some moves around baseball. It's time to get players now. They the coaching said they fired a bunch of coaches. They've fixed their they've now finished their coaching staff. Joe Madden's old bench coach in Tampa Bay, Dave Martinez, is the new yes. Cubs bench coach. I'm which, very excited about that because that makes Joe Madden happy, and you know, I mean, and, managers should be I mean, allowed to, can only help. You know, managers should be allowed to pick their bench coach, and yeah, I know sure. managers like to bring their own staff. Except, I think Theo and Jed told Joe Madden. I, this is just my personal opinion that the the he can get the job, and the only condition that he would have is that Chris Bosio has to stay. Right, because Chris Bosio is one of the highest paid pitching. I think he's and my guy. Top. He's done a great job with some of those young guys. He's done a phenomenal. He's looking like gold signed by Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer, and he's the third. I think he's in the top three for highest paid pitching coaches. He he absolutely he deserves every penny. Yeah, he, he does. I mean, he's built up Jake Arrieta. He's built up. Look uh, at the trade value he's built in Scott Feldman. I mean, a look at uh, Paul Mahalam, Jason that's Hamill. Right. That's right, and uh, that's all. It's Chris Bosio. He's helped develop the bullpen guys. He's helped develop Jake Area. The only guy he hasn't had success with is Edwin Jackson. And Travis Wood declined last year. It's that Travis Wood improved gratefully from his first year with the Cubs. Yes, because of Bosio. Yes, he did. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, Bosio is just just does such a phenomenal job i mean i think joe i don't even think joe madden would ever have like an objection to keeping him no i don't think so either because i remember in joe madden's uh Bosio was there in his introductory press conference they'd already spoke they already sort of knew each other and they got acquainted so i think that you know from the beginning he wanted right. him to stay and Bosio attended that yes he did he was in the back or something mm -hmm. yeah. and i know theo and jed have expressed how what how much they like what Bosio has done they've i mean they've said they love the job Bosio's. Done. That's why that uh, when they fired 
he was the only coach that didn't get fired when they fired Dale Sw- They fired Swayman his entire staff, except the only guy that kept his job was Basio.